Hello again, Struck Club. Dr. Bones is back. The bone centric zero minion necromancer build is now better and stronger. And the 2.0 version, instead of Mr. Bones, I called it Dr. Bones. I like playing female necros every now and then, so it kind of felt weird to leave it as Mr. And I decided Doctor is a reasonable retconning of the name. Regardless of that, the build has undergone some changes. There is some darkness to it now. Uh, we are using um, a legendary aspect as well as some nice unique uh, aspects to help with that. But one of the things is the focus toward uh, slightly more shadow and uh, um, we're still using bone skills, but the bone skills have added shadow to them. So bone storm, for example, has shadow damage over time. Um, there's um, We're using corpse explosion with, uh, with shadow damage over time, blighted uh, enhancement. Um, because I think it, it's nice to have some way to consume corpses reasonably fast now that we are not using minions. But overall, I think uh, you would love this ready for launch version of this build with all the skill tree um, um, picks, with the unique gear uh, and the legendary aspects I've, I've selected, with the sockets and gems, with the gear rolls that you might want to take, as well as the Paragon boards. So, book whoop, struck whoop, and let's go. I will start with the skill trees and the skills I've selected. Keep in mind, we have um, some spare room to maybe and do some changes with some flexibility. First of all, I'm using Bone Splinters, I'm using Bone Spear, I'm using Corpse Explosion and Bone Prison. That brings us to four skills. Bone Spirit, I do not recommend using actively. Only when you get a certain item that lets you cast free, trigger free um, casts of Bone Spirit, only then would I recommend investing into it. So until then, maybe you can use a curse. And even then, you could still use a curse, which is the Creepify, um, or even two curses, but uh, one should be enough. I mean, one, two, three, four, and with ultimate five. So you still have that one skill bar slot. Another alternative you could use would be Corpse Tendrils for the Suki Suki. So um, you can just remove three points from any uh, passive that you think, okay, I I'd rather be fine without that one passive. Um, or, or one point here, one point there. You have to you have to get a little bit more creative. I've done the, the, the groundwork, but if you want to add a fewer sixth skill, um, it's up to you to decide from where you want to remove points. We do have those points right now, which is two points in Bone Spirit. I, I put the last remaining point in it, but uh, you could just take those four points. But eventually you would need three at least of those four points. So in the worst case, um, you would still need two points from some of the... In the best case, I guess, you still need to to find two more points so you can invest uh, into fully upgrading a skill unless you just want a skill for for itself or a skill for um for itself and the first upgrade now it is what um, the skills look like as i said bone splinters uh, bone spear corpse explosion with bone prison um no corruption skills summoning skills again bone spirit as i mentioned bone storm and ossified essence now, I'll go to my spreadsheet so I can show you um, back to back um, next to each other both upgrades and talk about why I took this and not that. I love the vulnerable here on Bone Splinters and I think it fits massively nicely. If you think you can um, do vulnerable easily um, from other sources, we do have plenty of others, but if you think, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll not rely on this, this one is not a bad choice. The same goes for Bone Spear. I love the vulnerable. And that's why I put the blue cover here to, to indicate that maybe eventually you might have plenty of vulnerable considering you have the, the bone prison as well for vulnerable. You might want to go for this one uh, since bone spear is our damage dealer. If you think you don't want to use it for um, for inflicting vulnerable but, but rather for um, getting more of that damage bonus, it's not a bad choice to switch the point out. Cute flesh must have three points in my opinion, strong skill. Um, corpse explosion, we are planning on using um, the unique and the black river more about uniques later um i've selected four uh, or maybe we can say we can say three plus um one um so corpse explosion another skill we are maxing out alongside bone spear because damage will come from there um corpse explosion's radius increased and the blighted corpse explosion in my opinion is a must have for this build uh then bone prison uh one pointer and uh, ghastly bone prison for the vulnerable um grim harvest in my opinion uh max Maxed out is a must have. Fueled by death, maxed out, in my opinion, is a must have. But if you don't need this one, again, you can remove points from this one. 12% maybe doesn't seem as much. Maybe maybe it's okay to sacrifice those 12%, and that might be the three points you need uh, if you want to add one more skill uh, to your skill bar. 
Um, you could at least take two points and then one point from Bone Spirit um, if you're already using it. Bone Spirit, uh, I just put that one uh, last remaining point here. Um, you don't need to put two points in it, but since we're getting a unique item that gives us extra levels, might as well get even more of it. Enhance Bone Spirit and uh, I recommend Dreadful Bone Spirit for that essence generation because the moment you use Bone Spirit, if you use it actively, it will drain your essence fully. Um, if you choose to only use it with auto casting from that one um, item that gives it, um, I'm not sure whether this will get triggered, but if it does get triggered every time you trigger a free bone spirit, that's even better. More, more, um, more spamming of uh, bone spear that way. Um, in any case, again, another case where you could take that extra crit chance if you feel like it, and especially if you're using it as auto cast and you notice that this one is not triggering from the auto cast, then definitely get that upgrade. Um, here we're taking serration, rapid ossification, compound fracture, and evolution all maxed out. Um, incredibly good for this build. Um, necrotic Carpus, I strongly recommend that for survivability since we don't have something like uh, Blood Mist uh, and we do have things like Bomb Prison to help kind of keep enemies away, but it's not going to be that great in all cases. And then Bomb Storm with all the upgrades, together with uh, Standalone here and Memento Mori. So again, a standalone, you could remove maybe two points from it if you feel like it. If you don't need that damage reduction, that's fine. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend uh, removing the points from Memento Mori, considering we uh, sacrifice everything kind of built. Um, and then there's Ossified Essence, which is um, perfect for this type of build. Um, and it goes very well with, uh, again, with um, the, the Bone Spirit auto casts. Other than that, um, I hope it's all clear what we are taking. Again, sacrificing... Um, sacrificing all um, minions. So Skirmisher Sacrifice, Iron Golem Sacrifice for the crit chance and the crit damage, and Code Mage Sacrifice to get extra damage to vulnerable enemies, in my opinion, are the three um, top picks for this setup. For the unique items, I have selected one main item as usual, and that should be the higher priority that I decide to build around, and then others that kind of support that uh, fantasy for this build. So. We're going for Deathless Visage as the high priority. Bone Spear leaves behind echoes as it travels that explode, dealing and damage. And it also gives you armor, physical damage, critical strike damage and maximum essence. Now, um, the other items, I would uh, quickly mention those now. We have the chest piece called Blood Artisan's Cuirass. When you pick up um, X amounts of orb, blood orbs, a free Bone Spirit is spawned, dealing bonus um, damage based on your current life percent. Then um, extra blood orb damage, blood orb healing, armor, and ranks to bone spirit. Another great thing, uh, but keep in mind since um, this is also a helmet, the Deathless Visage. Um, another good uh, one is uh, Harlequin Crest. The thing is, again, you can only have one helmet, so I would recommend Harlequin Crest for um, for uh, when you're doing blood tides. Uh, hell tides. When you're doing hell tides, uh, certain special materials such as the uh, blood fin trolls will drop. And this 40 to 70 percent hacking material drop rate, it's it's probably impossible to get this much from anywhere else uh, in terms of items. Um, so this is such a rare row on an item to get. Um, I don't even know if you can even get it on on items. I haven't seen anything in the leaks. So considering this, considering it gives cooldown reduction and two ranks to all skills, it's a great item to use for health tides. And then again, you can switch back to, to that one if you have both uniques, if you're that lucky. And then another thing that is a must have, in my opinion, um, to get uh, for any build that uses Corpse Explosion is the Black River one-handed sight. Corpse Explosion consumes up to four additional corpses, so a total of five corpses per cast can be consumed uh, if you're lucky. Around the initial corpse, dealing um, an increased damage and X uh, larger radius per additional corpse. So the more corpses, corpses there are um, to consume, it will consume them, and the, the better the damage and the radius. It gives intelligence, damage to healthy enemies, fueled by death, passive, plus one rank, and also ranks to corpse explosion. So you would have three uniques at the same time equipped. This is what, uh, what they look like um, uh, in terms of aspects and stuff, but I will talk about aspects in a moment, actually right now. There's uh, an interesting way I've arranged them. Again, there will be some reworking of certain things, where certain things go. Um, but, for example, on the helmet, in the end, you would have Deathless Visage. Until then, Aspect of the Protector. Um, or Harlequin's Quest Crest could go, as I mentioned, if you don't get the Deathless Visage right away, you could use this one. But when you have both of them, Harlequin's Crest, again, could go for Helltide uh, setups. 
aspect of uh, serration is in the amulet, remains there um, even in the final setup. In the chest you have aspect of shielding storm, um, and, but you also have a blood artisan's cuirass, and once you get the blood artisan's cuirass, this aspect of shielding storm needs to move. Where does it move? It moves in the offhand, replacing the aspect of swelling curse. Uh, then uh, in the pants, the embalmer aspect of the embalmer remains forever. Um, Gwolf's osseous gel aspect remains there. Boots exploiter aspect uh, remains unchanged. Aspect of ultimate shadow in the first ring remains there as it is. And aspect of exposed flesh is in the second ring. Uh, but eventually splintering aspect, which is on our one-handed um, main hand weapon, will have to go there and replace the aspect of exposed flesh to make room for the black river. Um, so, I guess we covered everything. This swelling curse again, it, it gets replaced by a shooting storm uh, when Burritis and Quiraz drops. So, now that we've told you this again, um, this list, um, the final list is here in the, in the links that you would find um, to, the, to the Paragons and skill trees and stuff like that. Um, now, let's go um, and show you um, each aspect quickly and talk about why I picked it. Ultimate Shadow, in my opinion, is uh, what... Um, what I really laughed um, about. This this wasn't, uh, I didn't have information about this aspect uh, before the first two betas. And after that, with the data mines and uh, finding out about such a thing, um, it makes it makes Bone Storm a little bit more fun. So enemies damaged by Bone Storm take X shadow damage over two seconds on top of its usual um, effect. So that's not replacing the, the old effect of Bone Storm, the old mechanic with a new one. It just gains also a darkness um, damage and it also gets this additional effect. Um, and that's why we're stacking uh, later, you'll see in the Paragon boards and uh, in other places, we're looking for um, shadow damage over time, damage over time bonuses as well as the, the physical bon bonuses. Now, aspect of serration. Ossified uh, essence key passive also increases the critical strike damage of your bone skills by 1% per essence above, essence above 50 up to 30 to 40%. Um, and as you've seen, I've put that on the amulet. This means instead of 30 to 40 percent, this will be 60 to 80. No, it will be uh, 45 to, to 60 percent with the 50 percent effectiveness. Osseous Gale, a bone storm consumes up to eight corpses to increase its duration uh, up to four to eight seconds. Then we have this one: uh, primary attack makes um, attack makes enemies uh, hit beyond the first vulnerable for 1.5 to 0.5 seconds. Uh, bone shards um, from bone spear deal 50 to 100 percent. Bonus damage to vulnerable enemies and pierce them. Spelling curse, uh, something that eventually you, as I mentioned, you would lose from the setup. Uh, bone spirit deals increased damage based on distance traveled up to 15 um, to 25 uh, multiplicative. And first of all, you won't need this uh, unless you get the, the item that how to cast bone spirit in the first place, unless you uh, want to, to waste essence with uh, non how to cast bone spirits, uh, which I wouldn't recommend. Exploiter, great, one of my favorite aspects, regardless of builds. Just that 20 to 50% multiplicative increase damage to unstoppable enemies is so good on boss fights. But then there's the crowd control duration, which if you're going for a crowd control build, is a must have stat to stack. Which this build is not as much about crowd control, more about vulnerable and crits. Exposed flesh, great way to get some extra, um, extra essence generation, although with, uh, with Grim Harvest we shouldn't have problems to generate essence. And this one is temporary anyways. Protector another temporary, just a barrier every 30 seconds. Um, for 10 seconds, not a bad thing to have as a fewer. You need another fewer, put whatever you want there, uh, utility or defense if it's up to you. Shooting Storm, um, I really love this one. Each time Bone Storm damages an enemy, gain a barrier equal to uh, X percent of your base life. So uh, we have 45 from um, Necrotic Carapace, but we also have barriers from this one for a little bit of extra survivability. Entel Embalmer, uh, consuming a corpse, has 22% chance to spawn a blood orb. Something that I really uh, love uh, in the setup and I believe needs to remain there and shouldn't be removed because without this embalmer there will be no blood artisan um, cuirass um, usefulness with those uh, bone spirits and stuff. There are certain things that obviously would stand out like the amethyst with damage over time um, for, um, for the shadow damage uh, mechanics that we can give our bone storm and corpse explosion. Um, and even there's um, that one thing that uh, might make a bone spirit um, leave um, shadow trails if you decide to take this thing, uh, which I didn't. Um, but Emerald is a lovely gem for boss fights because keeping uh, vulnerable enemies is much easier than keeping things like crowd controlled, for example. Um, so, well, you could benefit a bit from crowd controlled, especially when mobbing. This build is not that heavy on crowd control. 
uh, it's very heavy and dipping into the vulnerable. It's, uh, we might get some overpower because we do have some 45 from Necrotic Carapace. We also have that one, um, and, and, and the, we have that, um, what was it uh, called, the aspect that gives you barrier, the, the bone storm barrier, uh, shielding storm aspect. So from that one, you could also get some barrier generation usefulness. Um, so um, again, ultimate damage is not bad from the diamonds as well. Uh, but I would recommend Emerald and Amethyst as top priority, then maybe Diamond um, and maybe Ruby and Sapphire equally okay. Sco, not that great. Now, for the armor, I would recommend Ruby for life. It also works well with Sapphire, uh, the introduction while 45, because you will get some 45, but Ruby's top choice. Um, Sco and maybe Diamond could be uh, alternative choices, but I would stay away from them, because we don't have as much barrier uh, from just that one aspect. And... Um, Life on uh, healing, healing received increased. I don't think that would uh, do that much great, even though we have uh, some um, blood orbs uh, generation. We're not focusing heavily on it. And for jewelry, as always, diamonds for all resistance, unless you might want to, to, to patch up your resistances in a certain element. But what I do have is I, I made a higher priority category and a lower priority one. And in the higher priority category, um, as you see, I've put it on my website in orange on my spreadsheet in white, while the other one on my spreadsheet is in um, light blue or here in golden. Now, it's very important to just keep, uh, keep in mind some keywords, which some of them are extremely obvious, and you obviously would want them, such as crit strike and crit damage bonuses and damage bonuses. But then you can take the, the keywords of crit strike chance and crit strike damage and damage and apply those to certain categories, such as um, the, the, the damage uh, type, shadow, and physical, such as the category of skills, um, type darkness and bone or even more categories of, of the, the skill tree clusters such as core skills top priority there macabre um, where corpse explosion is second priority there for dps um, then you could even use things like corpse which again will boost um, corpse explosion if you get um, bonuses to corpse skills uh, and alternatively even bonuses to basic and ultimate skills would work well but i wouldn't um, necessarily recommend those as much um, and uh, Again, you can apply crit, crit chance, crit damage, damage to those ranks to such skills, bone spear as well, uh, corpse explosion, bone storm, bone spirit, bone prison. Uh, so whether it's ranks to the certain categories or whether it's ranks to a certain skill, if it's ranks to a certain skill, obviously priority goes to bone spear and corpse explosion because that's where the damage comes from. But once you get the synergy with uh, bone spirit out of casting, uh, some levels to bone spirit might not be bad either. And if you want Bone Storm, um, if you can get levels to Bone Storm in the first place, you want it um, um, to be better. Obviously, that's nice. But Bone Prison um, for cooldown reduction, who knows? Maybe, maybe it would be worth it. Although I don't think it would be as much worth as getting uh, damage skills levels. Then there's Wiki Hit Chance, Wiki Hit Chance with certain types of damages. Um, um, those certain times. See, this, there is this um, X percent to to the to the Shadow Physical um, etc. skills. But then there is something that gives you Shadow Physical Damage Bonus. Uh, then there's Shadow Physical Damage to Elites. Uh, damage after killing an Elite. Damage reduction after killing an Elite. Um, there's, um, again, um, Close Enemies, Crowd Controlled Enemies, and Vulnerable Enemies. For those of you, you, again, you're looking for Damage, Crit Strike Chance, Crit Strike Damage. Then there's also Vulnerable Damage Increase, which is different than um, Damage to Vulnerable Enemies. Because Vulnerable Damage increases the, the bonus the buff gives you, whereas Damage to Vulnerable Enemies increases the damage you do, to the buffed enemies by that one and there's 45 bonuses worth it um overpower bonuses as well and um, damage over time bonuses as well um and it might even specify shadow damage rather than just damage over time two stages of the setup the one where i'm at level 90 without extra bonus uh, points from renown which means at level 85 if you have the 20 paragon points from renown you should have uh, what you're seeing on your screen and then at level um, 100, with extra 20 points, actually 19, I left the last remaining point unspent, left it for you to decide, with 19 points from Renown and uh, the 200 from leveling from 50 to 100, um, this is what it would look like. There is one extra board in the top, and there's some filling up and taking some extra clusters like those here and here, and that you see. Um, big differences, uh, mostly in the top boards, but still... Um, and as you can see here on the side, the stats obviously get different. Let's go bit by bit um, through uh, my steps in, in how I would level this thing up. 
Starting with the uh, with the starting uh, board, we're going here for the intelligence, taking the uh, life and damage. I always go that way, uh, and I always keep almost always keep this extra life point here. Now the priority is to reach the the socket as soon as possible, and normally I would put a socket that gives me for each x amount of uh, this stat or that stat get this bonus. But in this ta this case, I felt it would be best early early to get something like this bonus. Uh, grants 240% bonus to all magic nodes within range and additional bonus if you get 40 intelligence within range, which you will, but orbs fortify you for 6.7% of your maximum life. Um, again, you might want to take a different one, but I think this one fits nicely, especially if you already have the aspect for the but orbs um, there, since uh, we, we do want to, to, to get them. Uh, necrotic Arpus might not be enough to keep us fortified. Uh, reasonably, and since we don't have Bird Mist, I think this fits nicely in the build. So I'm taking this route here with Int, Willpower Dex Int, taking this one, and then it's time to get some Int. Um, and you could either go this way first to get this uh, Strength, Damage, Damage and Intelligence, or you can go down here, take these two Intelligence first, uh, and then go up. Uh, but since, since in this case you don't benefit from taking those extra Intelligence nodes first, just take those Damage bonuses here, Take that willpower as well eventually um, and take those bonuses here and uh, you might even skip that armor but since it's already getting boosted by by the glyph might as well take it um, and then again take those um, two ints and if you have this and this and those three here um, you should be at 40 intelligence and ready to move on to the next board which we are not using for the legendary we're not using a bone graft for bone graft itself we're using bone graft because i can fit 49 dexterity um, around it. There's 49 dexterity to take. And since I want to swat in essence to boost my um, core skills critical strike damage, I want to get as much essence as possible, as much dexterity as possible around essence. Uh, on top of that, it also gives us crit strikes deal increased um, damage to enemies that are not healthy, which is perfect. Doesn't have to be injured as long as it's not healthy, it works. So you take this route here, so you are close to this cluster if you want to take part in this cluster later. If I remember correctly, I didn't invest into that cluster but again you might want to interpret the beauty in a different way so might as well um do it uh, and open it up for you to to mess around with um, uh, with the least amount of respecting if you want to take some things now you're uh, rushing to the socket again and on the way to the socket here is one two dexes after you take this one uh, it's best to again start taking dex first i'll take this dex and then i would uh, maybe do this strength dex dex after that, I think it's fine to maybe take a uh, bone skill damage twice, and then this one uh, with the intelligence, and then you take two decks, and then another bone skill damage. After that, maybe int decks here, int decks there, and after that, take this route and exit the board. On this way, um, you are um, entering from that side. I think it's the, the the best way to enter is through that side, because we are going for glyph socket dominate. So dominate goes in the glyph socket, and this requires blue power. And I've taken. The boot begets boot, again, not for the boot begets boot itself, but because there's 54 willpower here, which means we can squeeze as much overpower damage as possible. And now you're probably realizing why I, I wanted um, early on to get that um, that extra um, 45 from blood orbs. So we have uh, more 45 so that we overpower more often, so that we take advantage out of this without just relying on, um, on necrotic carapace. So after you um, take this route, you rush over here to get the, the glyph socket. You take this uh, willpower on the way. After you take this, uh, by the way, it also gives you when you overpower an enemy, all damage they take from you and your minions is increased uh, for five seconds. So you take this uh, willpower first, then you take this willpower next. After this, uh, you you can do um, this willpower as well, and then maybe you can do overpower damage willpower and move up at the top. But orb healing willpower, but orb healing intelligence willpower um, over here. You actually don't have to take this right away. So you can maybe do that, take this willpower here, and then start going down here, int, int, willpower, willpower, willpower. Then dex, overpower damage, this one damage for x seconds after picking a blood orb, and overpower damage. You don't need this dex here. Uh, and then it's time to move up. Moving up this way with a lot of int on the way, um, and you're reaching the scent of death board, uh, which we are also taking the legendary, but we're not going for the legendary until we've cleared out all the good stuff around this cluster. 
you're entering from this side, taking the intelligence on the way. And this is another board with 54 willpower that we need because of uh, um, because of Scourge. Scourge, for every 5 willpower purchase within range, you deal increased shadow damage over time. Very good synergy with the way we've built um, this setup. Additional bonus, you and your minions deal increased damage to enemies affected by shadow damage over time effects. Um, so you're taking this willpower on the way. Then you're moving on to this strength, willpower, damage to injured, damage to injured, int, socket. After you take the socket, this willpower, this willpower, and those two willpower here, immediately taking them, as well as this one. After that, uh, take this, take this willpower, take this. And then you want to move up, int, willpower, int, willpower. After this point, you want to take this one, two, three, uh, four points, and then five with scent of death. Which is not uh, amazing, but it's decent. You either have damage reduction or um, damage, depending on whether there are um, no corpses nearby or at least two corpses nearby. So the worst case scenario is one corpse next to you. In that case, you're fucked. Um, no bonuses. Then you move to the side and you take this board coat, as you can see here, Wither. And again, Wither is good, but it's not justified the amount of uh, points I want. I need to spend to just reach it. Um, now, what we take in the Wither socket is Darkness. For every 5 will power within range, you deal increased shadow damage. And whenever your minions, you, you or your minions deal shadow damage to an enemy, that enemy has 2% reduced damage up to 10% for 5 seconds. This board has 49 will power, so um, one, one proc, one, one um, SWAT less, one um, bonus less than the 55 will power board, but it's still nice. We're going through this way, and then the way I would reach it is here, shadow damage, will power, shadow damage, will power, socket. At this point, you want to fill with some more willpower, so this one would be nice. And then you might want to take this, that willpower, then this one, then this intelligence, those two willpower, then this intelligence, those two willpower, then dex, int, willpower. You don't need to take all of that stuff here. It's optional if you really, really want to patch up shadow resistances and you can meet the requirement for the secondary one as well. You could uh, spend some points, you could uh, rotate some, some things from other places and uh, locate them here. Now, at this point, uh, it will be time to fill. And this is where um, the next board comes. The next board I've picked is Bloodbat, because it has a reasonable amount of decks, 49 decks. And I want to use Exploit, because again, this build heavily relies on Vulnerable. So, we are taking this route here. And on the way, it's up to you whether you want to take this damage to healthy enemies and crit strike damage bonus before you reach the next board. I personally would take this. The moment I step on these decks, I would go this way, take the crit damages, then take this one, take those two, and then move on up. And then you're entering from here because you want to be close to this one in case you want to take it later. Um, then you're going this way and entering through here. Decks, int, decks, int, boom, socket. Um, then decks here. Then I would go damage while fortified, damage while fortified intelligence, the two dexes. Then those two bonuses here, the blue ones, and then you go up int, decks. Actually, first int dex dex, then int dex int dex. And at that point, um, you want to start filling uh, some other things. We already filled with that one, but there's other things you want to fill. Um, and I would recommend this shadow damage over time here will go very nicely. Um, it also gives you regular shadow damage. That's not over time too, twice. Um, and then there's this thing here. Damage to enemies who are taking shadow damage over time, as well as damage to elites. And... Um, at this point, you probably would have filled everything, uh, except that one last point that I left. Again, if you don't like this um, damage to shadow damage over time taking enemies, you can save two points from here and here. Um, and if you don't like the damage to healthy enemies, you can save all three points from here. So um, even this one, damage while fortified, if you don't want it, you can save at least one point here and then another point here. To get notified when I upload more content like this one or other builds and guides for Wooter and not so Wooter games, you can subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out on notifications. As well as uh, keep in mind there's something called memberships on YouTube which lets you be a paying member for my channel to get access to perks such as emotes and badges made by me as well as the option to get one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring for the very basics of Adobe Photoshop, Premiere and After Effects. And memberships can be cancelled at any time if you no longer want to be a member. Uh, thanks for watching all the way until the end. Struck up, keep it cool, until next time and goodbye.